The kingdom of God is justice and joy, for Jesus restores what sin would destroy. God's power and glory in Jesus we know, and here and hereafter the kingdom shall grow. Wonderful words by Brian Rees, which introduced the theme for today's act of worship, the Kingdom of God. This worship is prepared by friends from the Great Howard Methodist Circuit. Later on this week, Richton Methodist Church shall be celebrating its gift day, and part of that is to visit open gardens of members of the church. You'll need to do that by booking a place to come and to visit those gardens. But here now are a selection of photographs to uh, get a taste of what we shall find as Jean brings to us our opening prayer. Lord God, we thank you for your presence around us. Thank you, Lord, that each one of us is unique yet we share a common bond in you. We come together as one body, but we all learn and experience things in different ways. We thank you for your amazing word that gives us so many pictures of your kingdom, something for everyone, something to feed our hearts and minds. Be with us, Lord, and bless us richly as we call upon your name. Amen. And now our prayers of confession. Lord God, sometimes we feel so set in our ways, we're not always ready to give something up to gain the thing of value that you promise. Forgive, Forgive me, me, Lord, Lord as, as I, I open my heart, heart to you. you. We want to keep our treasures locked up in a storeroom, safe from prying eyes. Forgive, Forgive me, me Lord, Lord, as, as I, I open, open my, my heart to you. you. Sometimes we just expect things on a plate. We're not always ready to work for something that you call us to do. Forgive, Forgive me, me, Lord, Lord as, as I, I open, open my heart, heart to, to you. you. We do want to be the yeast in our world, but we're not always ready to be pummeled or to give up our easy lives. Forgive me, me Lord, Lord, as, as I, I open my heart to you. you. Sometimes we take our eyes off you and feel so lost. Bring us back, please, Lord. 
Forgive, forgive me, me, Lord, as I open my heart to you. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A man takes a mustard seed and sows it in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it grows up, It is the biggest of all plants. It becomes a tree, so that birds come and make their nests in its branches. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A woman takes some yeast. and mixes it with a bushel of flour until the whole batch of dough rises. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A man happens to find a treasure hidden in the field. He covers it up again and is so happy that he goes and sells everything he has and then goes back and buys that field. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A man is looking for fine pearls. And when he finds one that is unusually fine, he goes and sells everything he has and buys that pearl. So in today's reading, we hear how Jesus describes the kingdom of God in very surprising ways. He describes it, first of all, as being very, very small, as small as a mustard seed. And here I've got some mustard seed. And you see, when I take one out, just how small a mustard seed is but full of potential, full of possibilities of growth in that one little seed. He also spoke about the kingdom of God as being like yeast, leaven in a bread. And I've got some yeast here as well. Actually, the particles of yeast are even smaller than the mustard seed. Look how small they are, yet placed in dough. They allow the dough to rise and create a wonderful loaf of bread. Very necessary for bread to work properly. He then described the kingdom of God as being like treasure hidden in a field. And when a man digs up a treasure and finds it, he goes off, sells all he has to buy that field. I've got some treasure here, look. I haven't found it in a field, I found it in our, in our house. That lovely treasure trove box here. And if I open it up, let's see if it's got any treasure. 
Cool. Looks like it has. Got a lovely, looks like a lovely ruby necklace there. And looks like a bit of part of a necklace there. Looks like a bit of gold, doesn't it? And we've got, oh, this is really shining brightly. Look at that. Green emerald as well. All sorts of other things in there as well. I wonder if you've got treasure like this in your house. There's another lovely piece of treasure as well. The kingdom of God being like treasure found in a field. And then the fourth thing that we're thinking about today, the kingdom of God being described like a man finding the finest pearl. And I've got here some fine pearls, not perhaps as big as the pearl might be in the story Jesus told, but you can see just how beautiful that little necklace is full of pearls shining brightly. That must have really shone so brightly for that man to see them and think, I want that pearl, I'll sell everything else to buy that one pearl because it's so, so important. What amazing ways to describe what the kingdom of God is like. Very small things, but very precious and full of potential. Now, something I thought you might like to do at home, and that is to draw a tree. And I'm going to draw a tree for you now, thinking about that little mustard seed being planted deep in the ground and then growing to become a tree. And this might be something you want to do at home. And I'll talk about what you might, how you might want to use it at home in a moment. But let's draw the tree. So first of all, you need the ground for, for the mustard seed to grow in. And then you begin to draw the trunk of the tree like this. Coming out of the ground and rising up. You might just put a bit of detail there with the roots. And of course, trees begin to form lovely branches. This going up and begin to spread out. These branches spreading out, and you see branches get a bit thinner as they spread out. Begin to form the shape of the tree, getting higher and higher. They go. So I do tend to talk to myself when I'm drawing. There we go, it goes around there. Coming on up. Where shall we have another branch? Oh, just somewhere there. I don't know what this is going to look like. I'm just drawing it and seeing what's going to happen. And that's the fun thing about drawing. He's not quite sure what shape you're going to make, what the tree's going to be like, but you know that. Trees have all different sorts of shapes, so it doesn't really matter what shape you're thinking about because it could be any lovely tree. I'm going to go a bit higher here, right up there, right up and keep the little branches coming off there, little branches coming off the top here. There we go, and then the tree sort of begin to develop at the top there. More branches coming out. It's amazing how trees grow, isn't it? So tall and so so strong. So I'll just put a bit of detail there for the trunk of the tree. These branches coming out here. So not too difficult, is it, to draw a tree? There are lovely things to draw. I'll bring some low branches down here. Do you know what I'm going to do as well? I thought I might do this. I'm going to put a Swing on the tree. How about that, eh? Swing. I wonder if you ever swung in a tree before. There we go. And of course, the tree is like this in winter time, but in summer time, we have lots of leaves. So you can try and draw some leaves. Just suggest leaves. You don't have to draw them all in detail. Just suggest some leaves in the tree. That. Flick some of the pen like that and get some lovely tree shapes. 
lovely bushy leaves. And you remember in the story Jesus told about a mustard seed growing to a tree, that the birds came to make their nests in the tree, didn't they? Well, you could draw birds landing in the tree, that would be wonderful. But I wonder, to make it even more meaningful for you, you might like to um, put this up at home and put things on it which are really important to you. So you might want to put up little, stick little objects on. You might want to stick on um, a photograph of someone who you, you love very much or someone who's very special to you. Um, you might want to stick on, I've got some glue here, stick on perhaps little heart shapes to remind you of something in your life which you, which you love uh, very much or something which, which happens to you. You might even want to put some little uh, shiny leaves on your tree which illustrate all the lovely things that happen in your life and things which are really important. Make it really shine brightly. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? So you may even want to just sort of write, you know, write someone's name in there, like Mum or Dad. Okay, on the tree, just to remind you of all the things which are special to you in this one tree. Because I think when Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God being like a mustard seed planted, and I mentioned earlier on about it being the potential of that seed growing and developing. Well, it could be us, couldn't it? It could be each one of us. We all have a potential within us, haven't we? To grow and develop and to find a, a life for ourselves, which uh, is uh, will be really fulfilling and filled with all those very special people and things that make our lives so, so happy and so interesting at this time. So have a think about that. Get some paper, draw a tree. Decorate it, hang it up in your room to remind you of God's kingdom being filled with many wonderful things. Okay. The kingdom of heaven is like this. The amazing thing about the parables of the kingdom that Jesus told are their simplicity. In the case of the mustard seed, the yeast, the treasure in the field and the pearl, their smallness and their value. During this time of lockdown, I wonder if there have been small things that usually might seem irrelevant or unimportant that have taken on a new significance and value for you, that have helped you through this global pandemic. Our cat has a nasty habit of bringing in wild birds into our house. She's quite gentle with them, so we often discover a little frightened and bewildered bird in the corner of our kitchen with our cat glowering over it. The other week I found such a situation. 
and very quickly we moved our cat out of the way and gently lifted the bird in the palm of my hands. It was scared, of course, and I could feel it shivering. I thought to myself, will it be able to fly again? Well, only one way to find out. I took it outside and placed it on the roof of our garden shed. I stood back and waited. Other birds were flitting about nearby, which I hoped would encourage it to fly. And all of a sudden, to my surprise, joy and relief, it flew off at great speed. Could the kingdom of heaven be like this? We can feel trapped, and I'm sure many of us have felt trapped during this time of lockdown and frightened by all sorts of things. But even during this lockdown, those feelings have been accentuated. Yet we believe in our experience that our Father God is there to gently lift us again and place us where we can regather our courage and be able to fly again. Perhaps you're waiting for that to happen to you. Pray therefore that God will release you from whatever holds you back and help you to fly again with confidence. One of the things that has kept us occupied during this time have been jigsaw puzzles. We've managed to complete quite a few now and they've given us great pleasure. Pleasure in working together to piece the pictures together and rise to the challenge of getting the blue sky done. We had a go recently at a 1000 piece puzzle with no picture to follow. Yeah, no picture to follow. You just had to try and put it together with one or two clues given on the, the box of the puzzle. Well, good as we think we are at puzzles, this was really frustrating. We got all the edge pieces together and began to build up some sort of picture, but it was really, really difficult. In order to overcome our frustration and thoughts about giving up and putting all back in the box, we went online and downloaded a copy of the picture. When we saw the picture, we were totally surprised at what it looked like. We had no idea it was going to be like that. And of course, suddenly, all the different and unusual colours and parts of images we'd been struggling with made sense. Could the kingdom of heaven be like this? We feel a bit confused at the moment about the puzzle that life has become. We're trying to piece it all back together, but at times we struggle. We don't know what things will look like, what the picture of this new normal will look like. But if we place our trust in God, we will surely come to see the picture as he wants us to see it, the vision that will enable us to make sense of all that's happening around us and to us. Once we have that picture before us, then we'll be able to put the pieces together. As a church, we need such a vision. The writer of Proverbs in chapter 29, verse 18, says, Without a vision, the people will perish. We could easily give up and put it all back in the box. But as we pick up the pieces of what was before in our church life, I wonder what new picture God will show us. Has God given you a picture to work with? A picture that we can work with together to complete? And if we get the same sense of relief at having done that, as we did completing the puzzle, then that will be truly wonderful. Look at these lovely flowers. Pretty, aren't they? We grew these from seed. We got a lot of compost and gently bedded each seed into the soil, as you do. It's taken a long while for the plants to produce flowers. At one point I was wondering if any flowers would appear at all. The plants seemed to be a bit weak and wilting. Each day I would look out 
and see if any flower buds were appearing. And now, look at these. <laughs> Nature's taken its course. At the weekend, many of us will be enjoying visiting each other's gardens for our Open Gardens gift day. The pictures at the beginning of today's worship are a taster of what we will see. You do need to, do need to book though uh, to join us for our Open Gardens around Rishton and elsewhere. Could the Kingdom of God be like this? The potential of seeds sown now producing a harvest of wonderful flower and fruit. Jesus had a lot to say about seeds and weeds and harvest of good things as being signs of the kingdom to come. He spoke about mustard seeds growing into trees and the birds of the air making their nests in its branches. The smallest of things, yet when they grow and develop, they make a big impact. These little flowers we've grown have brightened up our decking, all from tiny seeds. And now we get bees and butterflies visiting them. One of the fruits of the Spirit is patience. Let's pray for patience. Let's pray that all the good that has been planted among us at this time will come to fruition. The care has been shown. The work of the emergency services, the neighbourliness, the recognition that some of the things we have depended upon before, our materialism, our consumerism, our reliance on the big things of life, have not and never will bring in God's glorious kingdom. Maybe that's why Jesus chose such small things to describe the kingdom. Seeds, yeast, pearls, small and insignificant, yet full of potential, full of hope, full of promise. And for me, a little bird waiting to fly again, a puzzle that seemed overwhelming to complete, and a seed that grows into a beautiful bloom. Small but significant things that tell me God is there for us and ready to bring his kingdom in with our help and our support, our prayers and the works we do among and around us. The kingdom of heaven is like this. Amen. Lord, please help me to remember that when I feel small, as a mustard seed, you are with me and I can grow into a mighty tree and share your love and protection with others. Amen. Amen. Our prayers of intercession, let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for your ongoing work in our lives. We know it will continue until you take us home. Thank you for sins forgiven, for a life with you now and a life with you in the hereafter. We pray for the Methodist Church, nationally and worldwide. We pray for the Universal Church and the churches that have met through technological means during this time. We pray for all those who have suffered loss in this present coronavirus situation. We pray for scientists at Oxford and all over the world who are working on the vaccine. May their efforts soon be rewarded. We thank you for every kind act of kindness done during this time 
and all the imaginative ways that ministers and lay workers have used to keep in touch with their congregations. We pray for those who are in need of healing physically, emotionally and spiritually. Lord, in your mercy, hear these prayers. The Lord's Prayer Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Singing the Faith 638 Through all the changing scenes of life. God's kingdom is come, the gift and the goal, in Jesus begun, in heaven made whole. The heirs of the kingdom shall answer his call, and all things cry glory to God all in all. It seems very right that we close this worship by being under a tree, which of course at one time was only a very tiny seed. I do hope you found the worship via video to be helpful and encouraging for you. And now let's close our worship through the words of a blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and upon all those whom you know and love now and forevermore. Amen.